وقلبي كليم وعيني صارت كفي السقاء أئن طويلا وما من دواء فقومي يصاروا كما الببغاء لساني سليم وقلبي كليم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد And welcome to another video on the Islamic Knowledge YouTube channel. And before we continue, if I can please encourage you to just subscribe to this YouTube channel. So inshallah, we can continue making fantastic videos and discussing and introducing new books, inshallah ta'ala. And today's book is another book written on the biography and the virtues of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. These books are generally referred to as hagiographies. And as anyone who knows me will know that I have a passion for the hagiographies of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. Now, this book is titled Uqood al-Juman fi manaqib al-Imam al-A'zam Abi Hanifa al-Nu'man written by Lil Hafiz al-Mu'arikh Muhammad ibn Yusuf al-Salihi who passed away in 942 printed by Mullah Abu al-Wafa al-Afghani rahimahullah ta'ala and it's been printed by Darul Bashair. Now, there is a very old version of this book. Now, what this uh, publisher has done, Darul Bashair, they've just taken that old publication and reprinted it. So, don't think that the old publication has been redone in this copy and it's been typed up not not really. It's exactly the same as the old version and it's just been published in a really nice, you could say, cover. And Darul Bashair have now done this with books like Ta'nibul Khatib and other books as well that we'll discuss inshallah ta'ala in another video. Now, who is the author? The author is the author of the magnum opus, the absolutely amazing Sira book titled Subulul Huda wa Rashad, in which he's relied upon almost over hundreds, 1,000 sources actually. And it's highly relied upon even in the Arab world. It's really, really a fantastic kitab and it's been published as well. Now, the author author himself never ever actually married. He was min al-ulama al-uzzab as Sheikh Abdul Fattah refers to them. And he was a student of Hafiz al-Suyuti. And as we know, Imam al-Suyuti rahimahullah also wrote a book on the biography and manaqib of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah as well as one of his contemporaries who was Ibn Hajar al-Makki. Now this book is arguably considered by many many scholars to be one of the best books written on the manaqib of Imam Abu Hanifa simply because of its size. I mean, take another book that we covered in one of our previous videos and I'll link it at the top here called Fadail it's all with Asanid. It's not as big as this. You have to kind of rush through the Asanid and get to the main part of the story. Whereas in this one, the Asanid are shortened. It's 412 pages, so it's not massive. And it's really, really detailed. And we'll have a look at that in just a second. Now, before we continue, I have got some notes on this book. And inshallah, I will be sharing them on the Islamic Knowledge Telegram channel, which is titled the same as the YouTube channel, IK Courses. So inshallah, if you want to join the IK Courses Telegram channel, you will see an access to all of these notes there and I'll put that in the middle of the screen inshallah you just got to go on telegram and type in IK course at IK courses and inshallah ta'ala, the telegram channel will turn up then you can subscribe and join that channel now this version as we've mentioned is a reprint so therefore the Asanido shortened he does mention his source now his source does seem to be one of three books it's either going to be Akhbar wa Hanifa wa Sahabi of as Saimari Fadail wa Hanifa of Ibn Abi Al-Awam which we have done a video on and a two volume book that has recently just been printed written by Abu Muhammad al Hadith titled Kashf al-Athar al-Sharifa fi manaqib al-Imam Abi Hanifa so you will see constantly throughout this book Warawa al-Hadithi Warawa al-Hadithi and obviously al-Hadithi is a controversial figure and we will discuss him in another video that we will do on Kashf al-Athar al-Sharifa inshallah ta'ala the Arabic as you can see slightly blurry but honestly this is a book if you're a student of knowledge who's studying the Hanafi Madhab you should read this book and learn a little bit about Imam Abu Hanifa it's a fantastic fantastic book to read now he completed writing the book in 939 Hijri so just a few years before he passed away and he started writing in 938 so he took about a year to write this the book is divided into three sections so you've got the muqaddima he wrote the muqaddima and then he wrote the abwab so here you have the muqaddima al muqaddima and in that you've got six sections then the abwab you have got essentially uh, 26 abwab and then you've got the khatima which is the ending of the book now if you just look at the muqaddima you've got al fasl awwal fil amri bi ittifaq bil ittifaq wal ittilaf wal nahi 'an al tafriq wal ikhtilaf al mufdi ila ittiba' al hawa عدم الإنصاف uh, هي أزوال الفصل الثاني في بيان أن كل واحد من الأئمة المجتهدين في فروع الشريعة على هدى من الله تعالى وأنه مأجور غير مأزور فصل اختلاف الأمة رحمة This section is really fantastic He discusses the four مذاهب and he discusses how the اختلاف between the مذاهب
Allah should not be a reason that we should basically engage in uh, hatred for one another and neither should one question why these four madhahib exist. So he says, اعلم أن اختلاف المذاهب في هذه الملة نعمة كبيرة وفضيلة عظيمة وله سر لطيف أدركه العالمون وعمى عنه الجاهلون حتى سمعت بعض الجهال يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم جاء بشرع واحد فمن أين مذاهب أربعة And to this day people ask this question that if Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with one sharia how come we have four madhahib? And he answers that question right here in a fantastic way which I'll let you read inshallah. Now if we look at the abwab if we look at the abwab so that's the muqaddimah that's the introduction and if we look at the abwab look at the bab uh, the chapters that he covers they're really interesting the nasab of Imam Al-A'zam and in here as well he's quite critical he critiques Abdul Qadir Al-Qurashi Al-Jawahir al mudiyya when he's presented a long strange nasab of Imam Abu Hanifa got al-bab al-thani fi ma warada min tabshiri Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bihi fi man adraqahu al-imam min al-sahaba in this as well he's very critical he seems to be of the opinion that Imam Abu Hanifa did not meet any sahaba on page 63 for example he argues that but he says that I, I find that strange because he did have access to many Sahaba but I've got to be honest I don't think he heard from any Sahaba so he does say that he says yeah, sahaba. Lam yalqa ahadan ila hala so he thinks and he argues that no one guided him to actually access the Sahaba at that time because he was very young another really really fantastic uh, part so basically that's the that's the second uh, or third bab that we were looking at let's just have a look at all of the abwab in one go so if we look at some of the other abwab we've got i'm just going to whiz through some of them we've got al-bab al-khamis fi dhikri ba'd al-akhidin anhu min ahl al-bilad you've got al-bab al-sadis fi mabda'i amrihi wa nash'atihi wa talabihi al-ilm then you've got al-bab al-sabi' fi ibtida'i julusihi lil-ifta' wa tadris moving on you've got fi karamihi wa judihi fi wara'ihi fi wufuri aqlihi fi dhaka'ihi fi jumalin min makarim akhlaqihi fi aklihi min kasbih fi akhlaqihi fi malbasihi you've got fi bayani kathrati hadithihi wa kawni and in there as well he explains how it is not conceivable to say Imam Abu Hanifa was not aware of a hadith he says that on page 397 then there's a few you know interesting and funny incidents as you always have in a book like this some related to Abu Hanifa one not related to Abu Hanifa as well so I'll first record one not related to Abu Hanifa which I found quite funny on page 87 you've got this incident of a individual here قال أبو الفرج ابن الجوزي الرشك بالفارسية الكبير اللحية قالوا دخلت عقرب في لحيته. so this person who's Abu Azhar al Basri دخلت عقرب في لحيته فمكثت فيها ثلاثة أيام ولم يعلم بها. He, he, a scorpion entered his beard he was so big he entered his beard and for three days it stayed inside his beard and he had no idea there was a scorpion inside his beard right so that should maybe put you off from having a beard above a fist length right on page 275 you got a very funny, funny incident of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala so if you have a look at this one page 275 so a peacock was stolen but one of the neighbors of Imam Abu Hanifa lost his bird let's just say Bird. فقال سرق طاووسي. My bird, my peacock has been stolen. فقال أسكت. He said, don't worry, we'll sort it out. فلما غدا إلى المسجد قال أبو حنيفة. When they went to the masjid, Imam Abu Hanifa said, don't worry, I'll find out who you, who stole your peacock. He said to everyone in the masjid, أما يستحي من يسرق طاووس طاووس جاره ثم يجيء يصلي وأثر ريشه عليه. Does that person not have any shame who steals a peacock and then comes to the masjid and the feather of the peacock that he's stolen is still on his forehead? فمسح الرجل الذي كان عنده الطاووس رأسه. So suddenly the thief started to touch his forehead like oh my god is that a feather on my forehead so فقال ابو حنيفه ها يا هذا رد عليه طاووسه فرده عليه so he said oh you you've stolen his peacock give him his peacock back anyway والله اعلم you know i'm not going to go into what we think of that story but in any case it's very very then we also learn about subhanallah the ibadah of imam abu hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala he says here wa rawa aydan an abil ahwas again these riwayat are coming essentially from al saimari here who is obviously khatib al baghdadi's source as well in his tarikh law qila li abi hanifa innaka tamutu ila thalathati ayyam ma kana fihi fadl shay yaqdiru an yazidahu ala amalihi alladhi kana ya'mal if he was said to Abu Hanifa that you're going to die in three days he wouldn't be able to increase any of the actions that he's already doing he was already living his life at the epitome of piety essentially he would spend his whole night in the worship of Allah the Almighty it mentions here as well that he performed Hajj 55 times on this page as well and then you've got the Ramadan 
Ramadan of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala on page 165 he mentions He used to finish 60 completions of the Quran in the month of Ramadan then an absolutely fantastic chapter which really is absolutely amazing is his section on an uh, ending part. He's got Al Fasl al Thalith fil Kalam al Ahadith al Leti Zam al Hafid Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba and al Imam Khalaf fiha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf has gathered those Ahadith when he feels that Imam Abu Hanifa has contradicted the Hadith. The author of our book, he refutes all of them and he presents some of the Usul of Imam Abu Hanifa in Hadith. And this section is really fantastic. And he also spends the last final part refuting Khatib al Baghdadi fi Bayani Raddima Rawahu al Hafid Abu Bakr Ahmed ibn Thabit al Khatib al Baghdadi. عن القادحين في هذا الإمام العظيم الشأن. By the way, the author was a Shafi'i, so that's very important. It teaches us about respecting the Imams of the different madhahib. They are all our imma. In any case, this book is a fantastic read. Whether you're in the third year, fourth year, fifth year, even if you've graduated, you should get hold of this kitab. It's a very, very highly critically acclaimed kitab. Fantastic kitab for you to read, inshallah, and benefit from. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do share it, give it a like, and um, inshallah, join us for our next video. And Please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Jazakumullahu khaira wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.